you can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Wait, don't trash that used or broken computer, monitor, or TV. Do the right thing. Recycle your unwanted or non-working electronics for free. You can recycle computers, monitors, and televisions with eCycle Washington. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations may drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I want to give you the age of this woman right now because if you told me this story, I would think, oh, it's probably going to be an older person like me that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. But this is a 20-year-old. Her name is Emma. She was driving from North Carolina to Ohio when she said the ability to cancel her cruise control and her brakes stopped working so her car kept accelerating uncontrollably on the highway, which I have never – I – I mean, this is scary, like right out of like uh, we, you, know, you watched upload, Steve. So how yes. like these these self driving cars all of a sudden they 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 lose control and you can't do anything about it. I'm not blaming the car on that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, oh, the you, fix is in. The fix is in. Emily's car was going over 90 miles an hour as she passed others on the highway. Here she is talking about it. I had used the cruise control like I don't know how many times. The only thoughts that were really going through my head was, Am I ever going to see my kids again? Oh, yeah, I can imagine. There was a high patrol. Uh, Did you high- try turning it off? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody out there was like, when she shared that story, was like, Did you think about turning the off button? Yeah, you're right. Well, that's the IT crowd uh, solution. Turn it off and turn it on again. Uh, with a, high, uh, a highway patrol car behind her, Emma connected with a 911 operator named Becky, who calmly guided Emma through the situation and to safety. Emma, this is Becky. Take a hold of your emergency brake and see if it slows you down at all. Emma, does it slow you down at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Zach, we got her stopped. You're okay. Relax, relax, relax. Oh, man. Was that Becky with the good hair, I hope? It was <laughs> Becky with the good hair. I was very, very happy to help oh, Emma out. So the emergency brake was able to slow her down enough to be able to save her life. Well, that's why it's called an emergency brake. I mean, think about it. Well, I mean, I, Yeah. That's a good point, <laughs> but that's that that rate of speed. I don't. I wouldn't think that it would be able to. Well, it makes sense because the guess brake it slows enough. Well, because it will it, yeah. it will go against the wheels, mm-hmm. and so it, it's got to slow you down. Well, I think about a time many many years ago that uh, my old van was on tour, and I woke up to like some really weird smell and sound from my van. I had a minivan at the time, and I'm like, "What's going on, man? Why why does my car sound so weird?" Because you know we all took shifts, and one of the guys in the group was driving with the emergency brake on. Yep, been there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I yeah. was not happy. Yeah. Well, see, he so was he, like, man, I don't understand it. This car used to go a lot faster. Yeah, he was like <laughs> looking at me like, like, I'm, he's like, dude, yeah, what's up with your van? And I'm like, you idiot. Yeah, that's what's up with the van. You're driving on the freeway with this. Oh. At oh. no point do you think maybe I, there's something wrong? Yeah. Nope, not at all. Oh, I'm just a guy. This is forever ago. Becky says that she was uh, happy to be able to help out Emma, but Emma says, I am not going to drive for a while. I was so thankful that it worked out how it was and that this young lady was safe. I'm terrified to drive. <laughs> I will not drive for a long while. 
I would like to. Here's the thing. I mean, I, I would like to know what happened. I mean, was it a Some was it, glitch? Maybe was it? Yeah, because I have never heard of that. But I always wondered about that. Whenever I use, I don't use cruise control, and I'll tell you, it is for this reason. I'm like afraid. Like, what if it can't shut off? Like, what if for some reason it doesn't work? My brake won't stop it. I've had that very thought in my brain. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I've had cruise control for years on my car and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to use this. I just, I, I, I don't know what happens if it, you know, and then it just happens. This is my nightmare that I thought could happen to me. And there it is. I used to have the, do you ever have that, 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 that fear of your brakes not working? Yeah. Especially back in my, like when I was first moved out here and I was just driving a piece of crap station wagon. That thing was falling apart. Transmission was gone. I was driving around doing like 35 miles per hour and I couldn't do reverse. Like it was just like, I was, and I remember though when the one time we was going down Denny and then the brakes just like, you just heard them just like, they were just done. And then, like you felt the, Ooh. and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Luckily nothing bad happened, but that's like a massive fear for a while. Like, oh, oh boy, that's yeah. a big hill. Yeah, yeah, going down that Denny Hill. Luckily, it was towards the bottom of it, but oh, it was good. still. It was, we were still going down. Oh yeah, that's. Yeah, that's one of my fears, man. Like you know, because I say a lot of things. What if somebody cuts my brake lines? Because I watch the movies. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that really is a thing wow. that works or not. But I'm. Mean, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you see the guy. Go, it's not working. You know, I mean, that's that's what I. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, I can't help it. I, you know, I got hey, a persecution a, complex. It's a valid fear to have. Yeah. <laughs> it's in movies for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. If I'm more know. afraid of a banana in my tailpipe than a <laughs> brake lines being cut, but I can well, understand that. Uh, banana, brake lines. Have you guys heard about this crazy story about Michael Jordan? Which where, one? At yeah, this right? Point? I, yeah, yes, So good many point. stories are coming out about him because of the last dance. Yeah, which, uh, I mean, great for Michael Jordan, great for us. Something to distract us. He, he uh, I guess he wrote a 20 page love letter to an actress in 1989, just two months before he got married to another woman. Okay, Michael, see. <laughs> I, I've often thought that it's almost impossible to be at the level that he was at and not basically just do whatever you want to do and just think the rules don't just apply to you. A God complex, like I could get away with whatever I want. Yeah, I, I just feel that way. I mean, I, Derek Jeter's another guy. At least, you know, he never got married. He was like, I'm just, you know, and we heard about the gift baskets that he used to give because there was a time when Derek Jeter was basically the Michael Jordan of baseball. So uh, I, I just always figured, how could you not? I mean, you are the best at what you do. You're getting paid a ridiculous amount of money. Everybody loves you. And it makes sense that he would do something like this. I'm looking at the thing because I was like, 20 pages. I, a 20 page love letter. And I it was, have a hard enough time writing on a half of a side of a Hallmark card without my hand hurting. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's a. And I look at it though. They, they look, not that it makes a difference, still 20 pages of it, but they're more of like a notepad size, like a small. Oh, okay. Like, you know. Did he use a lot of spaces like we did to try to trick, you know, the, the, like when we had to do an essay? It does look like he double spaced yeah. it. Yeah, okay. 14.5 font. Yeah. <laughs> shrink those does anybody mar know? margins a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep. They'll never notice. <laughs> anybody ever heard of uh, actress Amy Hunter? It was back in 1989. She was 23 at the time. Uh, is she by, a uh, like, legit actress or a different type? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, by the way, this is gone for twenty five thousand dollars on auction on Saturday on Sunday morning. The love letter? Oh, I guess Amy must have put it up. I mean, because he sent it to her, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, it's postmarked from Charlotte on July eleventh, nineteen eighty nine, and like you said, it's written on stationery from the Guest Quarters Suite Hotel in Michigan, which is where the Bulls stayed when they took on the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals that May in eighty nine. And, and was that the one where they lost? Was that like the start of like a because they lost a couple of years in a row to the Pistons and then yeah. finally beat them? Well, I can't yeah, that's a good that's a good question. So he might have been just heartbroken. Couldn't get this He's girl. Not doing well, good loses in the championship. Apparently, it was sold originally six years ago. This letter for twenty five hundred bucks. Wow, and now it's twenty five grand, twenty grand. It's uh, twenty five grand. Yeah. So I got to think that maybe she, if it was her or someone in her life, sold it originally and they only got only twenty five hundred bucks. Now you're hearing it made twenty five thousand. You're probably like, ah, oh, should have kept that letter. I don't know if uh, if if Michael Jordan is still married to the woman no. that he married. Okay, because no, Michael well, that, Jordan's married to like uh, a thirty four year old yeah. smoke show. That makes sense that they didn't stay together. I mean, let's be honest. Well, he, uh, two months before. He, well, I mean, yeah, that, I'm not talking about how good she looks. I'm just saying you when you write a letter to somebody else two months before you get married. It's saying how much you love the other person, you know your marriage is not going to win. It's not going to last. But from what I gather from what I'm looking at, it, it feels like as if this was someone that he had strong feelings for, but then had to end it because of the relationship that he was in. And maybe it just was like, I want to get one last, I want to let you know I love you and goodbye before oh. I tie the knot with this woman. 
because he had a, a kid with the woman he was marrying at the time. Like Amy, he they weren't married, but they already had a kid. He said, Amy, sometimes I'm the most selfish person on this earth because no. for one whole year, all I thought about was Michael. Really? Very surprising. I admit I made a mistake, but found it difficult to change it. He goes on to write, Amy, if I was Michael Jordan, the ordinary man with a nine to five job, then it wouldn't be hard to admit my mistake. But instead, I am Michael Jordan, who is put on a pedestal and viewed to be the perfect role model. A lot of people, not just kids, but whole families. Can you imagine the responsibilities I have to deal with? Oh, good. Does he, does he, really, he, doesn't, he, he has no idea. He sounds like a complete a-hole. Oh, it's me. I'm the most popular person in the world. Do you know my struggles? Everybody looks up to me, and I just want to still bang you. Not to mention a baby by a lady who I have loved for three and a half years. In conclusion, he writes, Amy, I will always love you until the day I die. It'd be interesting to see if we check in with him now if, if he still does love her. Well, if he did, then whenever that marriage ended, why wouldn't he have gone back with her? Like That's a good episode of Friends or How something. How do you think the new wife is going to feel about this? I will always love you until the wow. day I die and look at me? I don't know, man. If I was like, if I was her, I'd just say, hey, what? He's like, dude, I wrote that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, however long ago. I clearly have moved on. Look Here's at the, you. You're a smoke show. I love you more than anyone. That's the problem. Amy Hunter is <laughs> no longer 23 <laughs> years old. Look at you. All right. Look at you. <laughs> We're talking how many years ago, Steve? 30 years ago. I Amy no Hunter idea. is now, what, 53, 54 years old. I don't even know who Amy Hunter is. That's the actress. Who I was, know, no, I know yeah. that. She's been in small TV stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not a whole lot of but stuff. I mean, Some soaps. Was, here's what Fresh I'm saying. Fresh Prince Bel-Air. Mm-hmm. Nice. See, that's the thing, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I am not getting involved with Michael Jordan. If I know, okay, it's Smoke Show Central, and as soon as I hit, what, 30, he's probably going to start looking somewhere else. It feels like, though, the letter is more of a farewell, not I still want you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. And also, uh, uh, maybe in 18 of those 19 pages of him talking about how awesome he is and how tough it is to be Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's probably what it is. But I will always love you. I yeah. knocked this woman up. I'm going to marry her. Yeah. So, Farewell. <laughs> I'm a great man. I'm a so I am. I've loved this woman, but I wouldn't do this if I wasn't Michael Jordan pedestal. Let me know if you need an autographed jersey. I'll send one to you. I don't know for a very uh, discounted price. I got to tell you something. What's up? Uh, it's probably because I'm just envious because he is the goat of probably all sports. But uh, this makes me hate him even more. You know, because I'm so jealous and envious of his life, and he doesn't even he doesn't even hide the fact that he's that guy. He's like, I am the pedestal, I am a god, and you know what my responsibilities are. And it's like, wow, all right, you're 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 I everything mean, I'm not. After Thank watching you. the last dance, like yeah, there's moments where you're like, this guy, seriously, come on, yeah, you know. But but also on the flip side, it's like, well, I don't know what it would be like to be the greatest in a sport. And it's undeniable in the amount of yeah, you pressure that it, you know, and, and also just you have to probably have a mentality of I'm the greatest at everything you do in life to be able to get to that level. I will give him that. It, it, when he played, you couldn't, uh, you know, uh, you, you just, I don't know, I'm going to say Sean Kemp. It was difficult to be Sean Kemp. In, in, in the world he was traveling because, uh, as you know, Sean Kemp is a punchline because of all the kids he has from different, different women. Mm-hmm. And he thought, well, there's no way I can be that guy if I'm going to be a leader and the greatest of all time. And I, in, in 89, I get that. That's exactly what the world was about. They had judgment against people that would have multiple children with multiple women. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, this guy's got a multi million dollar shoe deal. Yeah. I mean, everything. I'd love to know what that problem would be like. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be happy. No. Yeah, I want to, I'm, I'm gonna make you feel. I'm trying to make I'm, you feel good. You would be. You'd be miserable. Money can't buy happiness. No, but money can buy a really sweet home in Hawaii. Okay. Truth. There you go. Wow. All right. And all the poke that I could ever want. Nice. Speaking of which. Oh, <laughs> nice segue. What the hell just happened. Well, I just watched Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. They went to Hawaii to enjoy some poke. But I just watched the episode <laughs> that featured our friends uh, 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 Psyche and uh, oh, the uh, yeah, Nico, yeah, yeah. Psyche and Nico and uh, Vula and Vula yeah. from Vula's. The, the the it was almost like a Zoom style episode. Yeah, he made all of their favorite dishes. They sent him the ingredients, and then they they talked him through it. Yo. That French dip looks incredible. I feel like we had this I conversation. Know, no, we yeah. did. Did we have this We did. You yeah, said did. it. I'm yeah. just confirming what you said. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and, and that I've never thought of eating breakfast at, at Vula's, and now I want to have their French dip. That's all. I, I'm with you, I, dude. I, I like right. the episode. It was good. It was really good. <laughs> BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. 
So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders, no more leaks, just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh, I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on Navian. Take back your space. Stop storing old electronics you'll never use again. Recycle your computers, monitors, and televisions for free with eCycle Washington. This free program can be used by households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations across the state. Drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Please check for the drop-off location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org. That's one word, eCycleWashington.org, and click on the Where Can I Recycle link. 99.9 K I S W The Rock of Seattle There's a woman, her name is Emily Just received a Guinness World Record For the largest library book fine ever paid Totaling more than 345 bucks Congratulations (laughs) Damn Yeah when did she take this book out in the 1800s? How about this? Her, she didn't take this book out. She found it in, in her mother's house. It's a book called uh, Days and Deeds, a collection of children's poems. And she was uh, basically you know, going through her mom's house, finds the book, and realizes that it was due back at the public library in Illinois on April 19th of 1955. 1955. I wasn't even born. And Lies. that's when she took this book out. You just wow. graduated high school. All right. Uh-huh. So. What and, book was it? Uh, Days and Deeds. It was a, a collection of children's poems, and um, it, it accumulated at a rate of two cents a day when she finally paid it off 47 years later. <laughs> yeah. But I will say this. It is not the longest that a book has ever returned, uh, you know, taken to be returned to a library. Okay. How about a man that we think is perhaps the greatest man of our country, one of the great ones? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler is not the man. I'm talking the OG, the father of this great country, George himself. Apparently, George Washington did borrow a book called The Law of Nations. Are they the George Steinbrenner? George Steinbrenner. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) You're a New Yorker. No, please. (laughs) Our great state is named after this gentleman. Uh, He basically got this book from the New York Library shortly after becoming president and never returned it for the rest of his life. See, the corruption started from day one. And the Mount Vernon presidents. No, you can't. See, I knew it right off the bat that George Washington, all the things they said about him, bloody, probably lied about the cherry tree and his wooden teeth, right? So the, the library actually charged the person and took the money? They did. That's pretty funny. That's pretty awesome. I mean, look, let's be honest. I mean, the, the, it's a public library. They can use all the cash they can get. Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't really, I, I'm not mad at him for taking it. That's probably a good thing. And uh, 221, how about 221 years later, that's when the Mount Vernon family estate returned George Washington's book, 221 oh. years later. Wow. They found it and they're like, oh, hey, wait a minute. This is not our book. And did he get a pass because he was a president? I mean, that's cool. You're our first president ever. So what, like, the family doesn't owe anything? I guess not. Or didn't maybe, say they had to pay anything. Or maybe back then they didn't have that. They, they didn't have an agreement. Like, hey, if you're late, you owe two cents a day. Oh, that's – yeah, and you uh, – yeah, yeah, I mean, who's going to go after the president? The guy basically was the – like, he was our champion. I mean, we, you know, he was the guy that helped us have a country. So you kind of – I feel like if anybody gets a pass, it's probably him, right? Sure, him. His family? No. They owe it. Oh, the family, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, who do you think Who do you think you are? Okay. I don't even know the – I think it was my wife and I were talking about that recently. Like, the last time you were in a library – I know it comes as a shock. I don't go to a lot of libraries. But. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that with the internet, really, because I would go to libraries for research. My wife loves libraries. Um, still? Same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She, yeah My wife still? loves it, too. Yeah. Is there a library in Tacoma? There's a lot of libraries yeah, Steve, in Tacoma. All, the Tacoma they're, Public Library System. It's they, a whole thing. They're in malls now. There's a library oh. at Cell Center. Well, any of you guys ever remember of our riff? Remember that? Oh, reading is fundamental? I, I, was, I was a card-carrying member. <laughs> you know, you look so proud as if to try to say, look, I know how to yeah. read. Yeah, didn't they issue that to everybody? Yeah. Shut up, rap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, the, look, the, re, the like libraries though. Kind of the the trouble is, is that you have you have information at your fingertips. Now, if you want to go get books that you you know normally don't want to pay for, mm-hmm. that's kind of cool because they get all sorts of books and comic books and things like that. So my buddy used to go to get music. This is way before. Oh, I, I forgot was, about that. Yeah, but he would go and take. You know, he would check out with uh, some CDs and listen to them and then bring them back. It's a great thing. I mean, to think that. 
<laughs> it's, it's just like a whole different world. That's what libraries are, man. <laughs> I know, but like, who's using libraries right now? I mean, Other than the rest's wife. Yeah, well, uh, look, I, I think a lot of people are. and I kind of want to just hang out outside of the library and go, why are you going in there? <laughs> just to see what people are going to say. You're such a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I'm not going to shame them. I'm not going to be a like, nerd. Look, here's the Sounds thing. Sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, I will tell you this. I mean, I, I know what you're talking about because I, I'm fortunate enough that I can, you know, I, I can afford whatever it is that I want to be able to get information from. And the fact that, that mm-hmm. if you, you can't, you can go there. I remember going about three years ago just because our internet was off for that day or whatever, and it was hard to find a table. It was pretty packed. It's packed? The, yeah, the one in Greenwood in Seattle. Nice. So, I mean, a lot of people do still go. I think the ambiance, too. I yeah. think, you know what? It's quiet. There's tons of books around, and there's something about it. I think it's OG to be able to go, let me go crack a book. I bet anybody who ever watched Harry Potter, and I'll bring up Harry Potter because they would always go hang out at the Hogwarts Library and do a lot of their sleuthing and researching. And then go outside and play Quibbage. Uh, uh, Quidditch, uh, yeah. But I mean, I think there's something romantic about that. Just you know, bringing down the old dusty books, and that's how you're finding stuff out. I got a dumb question. Does it cost money to rent a book from the library? No, no, no. It's no. free as long as you live in the city yeah. area that you have it. You can get a library card and you can check out books for anything, free. Anything, anything that they have. Yeah. You just you only have to pay if you're late when bringing it back. What, and, are, what do the library cards look like these days? Oh, I have no idea. I didn't get one. Are they cool? I have, I don't have one, so I don't know. Oh, oh, that's my oh, wife. Oh, they, all the, the library champions over here. None of them have library. I, I have one, but it's at home because I don't live in Seattle anymore. It's my face Seattle on one. It? No, it had like a Seattle building or something. So yeah, usually they don't put faces. It's not like a facial ID sort of thing. So you are. So basically, you're making us feel bad because we just pointed out that you're an idiot. I, yes. Uh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> as long as I can, you know, we are extolling the virtues of a library. And then, you know, I've said I haven't been in one, but I can right. understand the plus, appeal. Plus, yeah. they have an app, the Canopy with a K, where you can rent movies. And you get you get three monthly credits, but That's there's cool. tons of free ones. We've watched a bunch of just random documentaries, some really fun old movies. Oh. So he says, I use uh, I use libraries to check out audiobooks, and I listen to them after your show. Yep, I'd, you can do that too. I hadn't thought about the audiobook thing. You know, and, and really, when you think about the idea, I mean, look, it it's a big deal to have free buildings where any information you want, you can go get for the most part. Where we know countries that didn't allow that. Use computers, I know that. Yeah. We always have those stories of guys getting busted for watching porn at the library. Yep. I mean, there are... Prob- such a weird idea. Oh, well, yeah. That's, that's the... Any I mean, port in a storm? Yeah, it's the other side of a free country, I'm afraid. But what are you going to do? Uh, oh, there's a, those are the library cards? Yep, these are the Seattle ones. I like the one with the space needle. If they could put my face on it, that'd be sick. <laughs> You can, you can just, put a little sticker of you. Yeah, you could glue your face on there. Whatever you want to do, Steve. You know, if it gets you in a library, do whatever you want. How about Chris says he's used the library recently. I went to the library last year. It was hot outside and they have a- AC. <laughs> True. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, look, a lot of people love to read around here, too. So, it, I, I mean, maybe our libraries are a lot more popular than maybe libraries in other parts of the country, but. Uh, so it says you can get currently uh, new released movies on DVD and Blu-ray at the library. Yep, you usually just have to wait a little bit of a while because they've got hold times and stuff like that. But how that. cool is that? That anything you want, I mean, for the most part, you can find at a library if you don't have any money. That's what I love about the concept. If you don't have any money, you can get exposed to what you want. Like you might, like you may have to wait a while in some cases, but you will have access to pretty much whatever you want. And I mean, if there's a book or that's how I really got into comic books because I couldn't afford them. So I would go to the library during the summer and get like five, six, seven, sometimes 10 books, comic books and books. Yeah. But if you don't find one that you need, you can order it and they'll deliver it to that library yep. so you can check it out. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, someone's Dang. got a 12th man logo on uh, the front of their library card. Oh, that's cool. And then another text. I'm an everyday library customer on Whidbey Island. Libraries are the best. I don't have internet, so I rent movies, books, audio books, cookbooks, etc. How about that? It's awesome. Well, it is Whidbey Island. I don't know. Do they even have lights out there? I'm not sure. They it's very do. Rust- it's very rustic out there on Whidbey. Whidbey I'm, Island's awesome. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been know, to that. Li- I've been to that. It library. is, but it's also you know. I mean, it's their little. They, they 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 like to be cut off and like to be you know. Hey, we're like it's yesterday land. Yesterday land. Yesterday I, land. I, I I I understand it's beautiful out there, but I go out there and I you know me I'm a ta- I'm a guy that likes to be close to the action and I go to Whidbey and I go oh my gosh I can feel that I'm disconnected I just I feel like I'm like I feel like I'm just not a Borg anymore I've been removed from the Matrix. <laughs> And it's just, Freedom. It, it makes me uncomfortable. I know it makes. Oh, it makes you uncomfortable. Yes, I like to be around. 
knowing I'm connected to you know wired in it, so I uh, would be. I mean, Whidbey's beautiful. I'm not. I'm not don't get me wrong. You know, they do have like electricity there. Are you like, sure? Because I'm. I, I, a, I mean, I saw a guy out sure. there farming, and you know, I, there's some people who had a windmill. I don't know. I don't know what's going on up at Whidbey. It's been a while. I got drunk playing golf there once. Good job. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what you normally do playing golf? That's the last time I ever played golf. Well, that is. Uh, <laughs> I think we should use you as the spokesperson for the Whidbey Island Chamber of Welcome Commerce. Welcome to Whidbey Island, Island where, got, where you can get drunk playing golf. Hey, we got a kind of nice Italian restaurant over here, I think. And how? Yeah. Oh. Speaking of not returning things, somebody says that they have They just found a, a, a box uh, where they have Netflix DVDs in there the other day while getting ready to pack up for a move. I'm pretty sure they're late. Well, where they, I thought, isn't Netflix supposed to do something to you? The charger or something? Do they even do DVDs anymore? They do. Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> Libraries and Netflix. Yeah, Netflix is like the library you pay for. Yes. It's, yeah, it's crazy that they're still in that business too. It, I mean, that's that's how they started. Just like Amazon was a book business, mm-hmm. Netflix would actually send stuff to your house. I remember one guy saying, "You're crazy going to Blockbuster. You're out of your mind." And he, he used to tell me how great this Netflix was, yep. and I'd be like, "All right, I don't know. I can just go down the street and walk into a store." I remember, Netflix was just like, I mean, Blockbuster was kicking and screaming like, "No, we're not going to do that." And then eventually, they tried to do the Netflix model, but it was too late. People were already into Netflix. And I give Netflix a lot of credit because they pivoted quick. And became a content provider, which uh, I think everybody learned from MTV. And people can sit there and make fun of. They realized music videos was not the way to go. It wasn't going to get them the money that they wanted. Yeah, yeah. and they ended up becoming a quite a quite a network because of it. And I think Netflix saw that and said, "We just can't stay in the DVD business." Just like Amazon was like, "Well, I'm sure Amazon always believed we're going to be more than books." I know there was probably a meeting somewhere where they said, "Jeff, you're crazy. You're lucky if we can sell these books." He's, like, "You don't understand. We're going to be everywhere." And they were probably like, "Okay." Okay, somebody calm him down. Get him, get him something. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, my house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on